Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thousands of memories are created and captured in each photo taken on your magical vacation. We proudly present Capturing Magic, where we help those moments live on forever. Hey everyone, welcome to Capturing Magic, where we are using technology to create and capture magic memories. This is episode eight, recorded on Saturday, December 1st. You can find more tips, tricks, and tools and notes for this show at capturingmagic.me. I'm Steph C, and I'll be your host today. And I have here with me my co host, Brittany Lovett, who can be found at BritishDesigns.com, where she has digital scrapbook supplies. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Steph. Hi, everybody out there. (laughs) And we have joining us today for the first time, Tanya Hickman, who is on the Capturing Magic team. And she can be found at crossbonecuts.blogspot.com. Hi, Tanya. Hey, guys. How are you? So excited. I'm so excited to be here. Yay! We're glad to have you. Really (laughs) excited to have you. Let's share a little bit of information with our listeners about you. You live just a few minutes away from Disneyland. I'm about 15 minutes, yes. Wow. So I try to go almost every week. You lucky duck. Yeah. (laughs) So jealous. Now, are you the one, I think I vaguely remember this, who made a goal and you and your mom would go every single week? Like on Yeah, we we do go. Yeah, pretty. We go on Tuesdays. Tuesdays, yeah, that's what it was. I read yes. your blog a long time yeah. ago, <laughs> and I we go on Tuesdays. My mom got um, laid off from work a couple years ago, and during that time, that she was about off of work for about a year, and we went almost every single Tuesday. That was like our thing to do. We would go every Tuesday, and then when she started back up at work again, I was sad. Yeah. <laughs> like, I had no one to go with, and I I would still go by myself. That's on Tuesdays, right. if I could. Yeah, you'd almost go through withdrawals if you. Yeah, it's weird. It is weird. I hadn't because of um, Thanksgiving. I didn't go at all last week, so I hadn't been since the week before. And when I went this past couple days ago, I was just like, oh, I need to get in there. Like, <laughs> and it's you, weird. I saw on Instagram you got to go to Club Thirty Three. I did. Last I week. did this on week? Wednesday. Yeah. Yes, on Wednesday. And so tell us. Uh, it's so much fun. <laughs> you know, it, it's really expensive, but you, you're definitely, it's something that you have to do if you can at least once. Was that your first time? It was my second time, but okay. the first time I went was about 10 years ago before I even owned a camera. I don't, can't even tell you anything. I don't remember anything from that trip. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. And it's, I want to kick myself thinking about it because <laughs> like, I just, oh, I can't even remember what I ate. Well, <laughs> it's so, so irritating. <laughs> That's funny. You took pictures of ev- of lots of details, and I loved seeing all of the little details. You know, if you're on Instagram, you have to go follow Tanya and then look at all of her Club 33 pictures. It's I posted over 100 photos. Oh, wow. Wow. I didn't realize it was that many. I didn't realize it either. I mean, I was looking at all of them and just eating it all up, loving it, and I had no idea that it was 100. My followers are probably just like, especially the ones that aren't Disney people, are probably like, <laughs> What in the world is this? Sure. Are you going to put all those on your blog, Tanya? I was thinking about writing up a blog post. Yes. Yeah. You should take all those Instagram pictures and put them on your blog so we can see them easily. Yes. I'm still trying to finish up the last two posts from my Walt Disney World trip by a year ago. Those are hard. Like are. trip report posts yeah. on your blog. That takes a long time. I'm almost done editing those photos and then I will do those and I will definitely do the Club 33 ones. That's why I took so many photos because I thought I would do a trip report on the blog. Cool. So share with our listeners your username for Instagram. It's Tanya H666. So they could even go to Instagram.com forward slash and then your username, right? Isn't that how it is now to see people? changed it. So you have your own profile pages now. Yeah. It's nice because you always try to find a viewing program that's easy to look at your own photos. When I try to send people that don't have Instagram, they're like, how do I look at your photos? And now with these new profile pages, it's a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. So people can look at it. They don't even have to be a member of Instagram, right? Exactly. Go look at it and see all of your, your hundred club 33 photos. (laughs) For me, if anyone's a Mac user out there and they use Safari, I don't know why, but I can't get Instagram.com slash usernames to work for me on Safari. So I have to use Firefox and then it works great. I always use Firefox. I've never 
really use Safari, but I've never tried to do it. Like on my phone has Safari, obviously, but I've never actually tried to look at it on my phone. I'm glad you mentioned that. I've never tried to look at it on my phone either, but just on my computer, I use Safari all the time and it doesn't work. So if you're trying and it's not working, it's probably because you're using a weird browser. <laughs> so I just learned that this week. <laughs> it doesn't work with Safari. So Interesting. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Very interesting. So I would I would love to see you also slurp those Instagram photos up to Blurb or Adorama Pics or one of those photo book sites. Oh. I've been dying to have a reason to make one of those cute little small Instagram books. Yeah. And this is a, a good perfect use. Instagram book. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. I I can't wait to see photos of you, of it if you get it printed. Yes, I think I will. I took close to two hundred photos after we could taking out all the bad ones and deleting doubles. And so it was close to 200. So there's a hundred more that we're going to even put on Instagram. Wow. So I can definitely make a book out of those. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> okay. Let's move into our discussion topic, which today we're going to be talking about Disneyland at the holidays. We just recently did our Disney world show. So now we're going to do Disneyland at the holidays, which I have not yet had the privilege of visiting Disneyland through the holidays, but I'm sure you believe that though. I know. As much as you go, Steph, I can't believe that. <laughs> well, and the biggest reason is because of kids' school schedules. Yeah. yeah. And because I hate going when it's crowded. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I usually choose times where it's going to be less crowded and we pull the kids out then. And for some reason, we just haven't ever done it during December. Hmm. But yeah. The beginning of December is usually, I mean, if you can pull kids out of school, beginning of December is a really good time to go. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That. Like when you were there on Wednesday, Tanya, didn't, yeah. wasn't it pretty like. It was pretty empty. crowded. <laughs> yeah. I have, was, I have pictures of, usually the New Orleans square area is pretty clustered and full of people, but there was plenty of space. Not that many yeah. people at all. Yeah. That's for next year. Uh, my goal is to do Disneyland the beginning of December. So yeah, it's a good time. The week after Thanksgiving is usually really good. Yeah. So how many times have you uh, done Disneyland at the holidays, Brittany? Um, I think I've only done it twice. And both times we have gone that first week of like right uh, after New Year's. We're not, I've never done, I've never wanted to or attempted to do New Year's Eve or anything at yeah. Disneyland because it's just madness and I'm not into that. But we go like the day after. So we're there like the second through the sixth or so. I've done that twice now. So you're just kind of catching the end of the Christmas season yes. and it's been pretty slow and it's a good time because, you know, the holiday rush for like your own personal schedule is over and it was just a good time for us to go. Both of those trips were like family Christmas gift trips from my parents. One was from my parents. One was from Josh's parents. Okay. So we went once in 2007 and then once in 2010 was our last time there for the holidays. See, I've so. done lots of January trips to Disneyland, and last year I was able to catch um, the Holiday Small World overlay because they didn't. I went early enough in January that they hadn't taken it down yet, which is usually see. one of the last things to come down. Yeah, I was, and it's one of the best things. Yes, so. I, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I was thrilled to be able to see it. I didn't know that they hadn't taken it down yet, and so when I walked back there and saw it was up, I freaked out. But <laughs> that's a good surprise. <laughs> really good surprise. Yeah, I was really excited. So I asked each of you to kind of give give us your top, you know, things that you can't miss when you're at Disneyland for the holidays. So, Tanya, do you want to start? Sure. My um, my number one pick and is it's the small world. Oh, it's, it's a small world holiday overlay. And I normally which is funny for me because I don't normally like that ride at all. If I can keep from going on that ride, yeah. I will not go on it. <laughs> but <laughs> I just, I can't handle it. But during um, the holidays, it's a definite must because it is gorgeous inside during the holidays. It is. It's so special. That's my number one pick too. I think we're going to have like the same list. Yeah. <laughs> Which is my fine. Num- <laughs> it's my number one pick as well. It's just magical. Like it's like, well, it's, to me, small world is magical anyway. See, so yeah, I'm different yeah. than you, Tanya, yeah. on that. But I, with the holiday overlay, oh my gosh. It's like when they take it down, it's like kind of empty. <laughs> like, I know. It's, I'm it's like, oh, <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit plain here because <laughs> it's so over, you know, like so embellished and so fancy during the holidays. It's I love it's been raining here all week and it's even prettier when it's been raining because it's, those lights just reflect off of that whole mall area. Yeah, oh. it's yep. really it's really nice. 
Yeah, and, and the they light do all the stuff on the inside too, all the Christmas touches on the inside. I love that um if in the I have you guys have both seen obviously that they added the characters to the ride. Yes. And I love the little mermaid Ariel singing area because she dr- she sings jingle shells instead of jingle bells. So cute. It's super cute. I just I I don't know. I love that ride at Christmas time. And then aren't there like smells? They even put like smells yeah. in there where there's like a gingerbread pine smell, pine, pine smell. Yep. The whole ride just makes me happy at Christmas. Everything at that park makes me happy at Christmas time, but that's a good, I love that ride at Christmas. Yeah. It's a definitely like, don't miss it. Even if you don't have little kids and you wouldn't normally ride small world, you can't miss small world holiday. I agree for sure. What about your next one? Next one is Haunted Mansion holiday. Yeah. I love the Haunted Mansion. Don't get me wrong. But after about the six month mark, I'm like, I'm ready for Haunted Mansion holiday to come back. Yeah. And it's, it's hit or miss. Some people absolutely hate it. I absolutely love it. (laughs) It's bright. And I don't know. I think it's just a nice little change that can happen a couple months out of the year to the Haunted Mansion. Just do something a little different. And the great part is about Haunted Mansion holiday is you can catch it from Halloween clear to Christmas. So it's like, it's not like you just have to be there at Christmas to be able to catch it because it's there for longer than just the Christmas season. Yes. And I like that Jack and Sally are out meeting. Did they meet during Christmas too? Yep. They meet all Christmas. As long as the Haunted Mansion holidays up, they'll be meeting. And this year, every single time I've seen them, they've been together, which is kind of rare because Towards after Halloween, it's mostly just one or the other that you manage to catch. But they've been out a lot, and they have a photo pass photographer with them now. Oh, see, when we because I've only met them there. Well, I met them at the the Halloween party once, but then, but I've never met Sally. Every time we've ever gone, it's only been Jack, and there's never been a photo pass for photographer there. Uh, the photo pass have been out in full force right now. Good. Yeah, I'm, they have been for sure. I when I was down there, and I think I think Disney's realizing the pull of those two characters as well. Yeah, the draw. Yes, and I love to see um, inside the Haunted Mansion Holiday every year they change up the gingerbread house in the dancing ghost ballroom scene. Mm-hmm. I love to see what they do because it's like a big thing what gingerbread house they're going to put in there every year. And every year, it's something absolutely spectacular. It's a nine-foot-tall Jack's house this year. Yeah. And it smells like gingerbread, and there's a flying zero and a ghost train. It's really cool. Yeah, we got to see it when we were there um, just at the beginning of the – it was, like, right when it had just got put in. And we always try and, like, have it be a surprise. Like, we try to not look – because they post so much stuff, like, now on, like, the Disney Parks blog about it. And we like to go in and just see it for the first time and be surprised. But I had accidentally seen some pictures of it. I didn't want to, but, like, I was just scrolling through the blog and was like, oh, dang it, didn't see that. I didn't see that. So I kind of knew what it was. I didn't see, like, full pictures. You know, I didn't really look at it carefully. But so Josh was surprised, though. And that's always fun to see what they do each year. It just – it keeps getting bigger and more awesome every year I think no idea and it's real like they really make the gingerbread house it's not just pretend it's made out of real cookie yeah yeah Yeah. like the bakers the Disneyland like bakery makes it yeah yeah they have the gingerbread smell and you get pretty blasted with that smell at that yeah you do it's a little (laughs) over I love it see I got I got I did get to do this for the very first time I posted on capturing magic uh, this fall when I was down there in October and I loved it so much, but I loved the smell too. I couldn't get enough of that smell. Yeah. It's, it's good. It really gets you into the holiday spirit. Yeah. I always hope that the ride slows down or stops like right there. <laughs> so you can like <laughs> smell it and look at the castle more or the gingerbread house more. And yeah, getting photos of that thing is always proven to be a little difficult. Next to impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there in the some of the big you know Disney photography sites, the Disney tourist blog, and some of those they are they're able to get shots of it, but it's I kind of envy them. Yeah, that they have the know-how and the abilities to do it. It's an envious <laughs> skill. <laughs> I could probably figure it out eventually, but yeah. So I just want to I just want to ride through and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not, yeah I've taken so many photos of it that now there's a besides the gingerbread house, there's really nothing new to take photos of. So now I just like to sit back and look at everything. 
Yeah, I took some photos on the ride with my iPhone. Not the first time, though. The first time I was so immersed in everything, all I could do was sit and be in awe of all of it because I had never really see, I hadn't seen that many pictures of it online or anything. I didn't really know what to expect except for the gingerbread house. That was the only thing I had seen. Yeah. And it was just so, I don't even know the right word, awesome. I mean, really, it was just so incredible that all I could do was sit and watch. And then the second time I went through, I was like, oh, I should take some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. my iPhone did great. I was really surprised in the dark yeah. photography. I have found that my iPhone actually takes good pictures in like the darker mm-hmm. rides because it, like, it's easier. I don't know. And it's, it's, it's easier not to have to try and fix your settings like yeah, during the exactly. ride. And yeah. I got some good pictures of, yeah, you, I remember now that you say that stuff, you got some good ones in the Haunted Mansion holiday. Yeah. I was pretty pleased with myself. <laughs> <laughs> and yourself on the back. Yes, I was for sure. <laughs> What's your next, the next thing on your list, girls? My next thing is the new Jingle Jangle Jamboree. The, oh, I don't know about yeah. this. Oh, it, down in the, yeah. In, Frontier in the Big Thunder Ranch area. Yes. Oh. They started in the summer. It was uh, just a country jamboree that they did during the summer. They moved Bill Hill and the Hillbillies back there and they had the care they had the characters out in Western wear and you're able to get kind of special food and do games, uh, lasso roping and all kinds of stuff with the kids. And you were able to meet the characters in co- in uh, Western outfits back there. And then at Halloween time, they moved the villain stuff back there. So they've been theming it and now it's the jingle jangle jamboree. So you get the, um, the characters in their Christmas outfits, the better Christmas outfits, not the sweater ones they wear on main street. They wear the fancier outfits in the back and Santa Goofy's back there. Um, regular Santa Claus is now meeting back there. They have special food. They have games. You could decorate cookies. It's, it's And Bill Hill and the Holiday Hillbilly thingy is back there, too. I love that they're doing that, too. It's fun. Yeah. It's so great to see them using that big um, space. I, I forget what it's called, that big, like, the festival. Are, are there, yeah, the festival arena space. Because it's been, it's been sitting there unused for so long. It's great to see them using it for something. Yeah, it's nice. And it's never, I don't know if people just don't realize it's there or they just kind of wander in and they wander out, but it's never crowded. And the characters, like, even though they have like kind of official meet and greets back there, a lot of the time there's nobody waiting to meet them. So they'll just wander around and play with you. That's like, awesome. Running around doing their thing. The country bears come out and meet back there too now. Oh, fun. Yeah. And they have um, special food treats. They have the new Mary Monty Cristo bites that everybody's been talking about. Yeah. I don't know about those. What are, what is that? The Monte Cristos from. Yeah. But they're in, they give you, I think it's six or eight bite sized ones and you (gasps) buy them and it comes with the sauce that they could normally. And the only thing you don't get is the palm fritz. So you get that at the Jingle Jangle Jamboree? Yes. It comes in like a little. So it's a perfect kind of snack. I mean, the Monte Cristo at Cafe Orleans, I can eat maybe one piece. Yeah. Yeah food and so those bite-sized ones oh I need to get my hands on them I haven't had them yet (laughs) yeah I think they're the perfect size too from what I've seen online Uh, Uh, just because it's a bite and yeah I can only eat a half a sandwich as well they're so rich yeah Josh and I always have to split (laughs) (laughs) it is a lot and you can get hot cider and hot cocoa and they serve um bratwurst and sauerkrauts back there uh candy cane cotton candy yay yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have all kinds of stuff. Sounds so fun. You're making me like want to go so bad right now. I love it. You haven't seen any pictures of Mickey and Minnie that meet back there yet? No, and I want to go look. Nancy is like the plaid dress and he's wearing a top. <gasps> oh, it's Because cute. I like their sweaters, but it is a little bit plain. Yes. And it's, you know, it's just the same thing we kind of see here every year. And I like the sweaters, but it's nice to see them in something different every now and then. Yeah. Well, any different, anytime they have a new costume or just something different, I always get excited. I yeah. Know. <laughs> Hard not to. What was number to look up their costumes right now? Oh my gosh. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> put, put a link to that in our show notes, Kay. Brittany, and we'll, I don't know. That. Tanya, maybe you have some cute pictures of them. I can put in there. We can put in the show so people can see how cute it is. <laughs> they are really oh, cute. My goodness. So cute. Okay. Uh, now I really will have to go and offer Christmas. <laughs> Again, because this is new. Yes. Yay. For sure. Okay, so that was number three, right? 
That was my number three. What Did was you that? have a different number three, Brittany? You probably do uh, since well, you haven't been back I there. I do, but well, if, let Tanya go through all hers. Okay. And if some of mine are duplicates, I'll say okay, it. Other, okay. And then when she's done, I'll say a couple okay. that I have. Four on my list is the Christmas parade. Yeah. Because it's just, I mean, it's been the same for, I don't even know how long. <laughs> like Forever. As as I, but I get excited to see it every single time. Me too. That's my number three because I don't have the jingle jam, but whatever it was. So <laughs> yeah, I love the Christmas fantasy parade. It's so cute. Do they do yeah. snow on Main Street? Too? Yes. Not during. After. The, not yeah. during. The fireworks, they do it. Okay. Oh, they don't do it after the parade anymore? I thought they uh, did. From what I read, they're saying, I, well, I don't know. They could. The parade doesn't, Um, they don't do any nighttime parades now. <gasps> this parade is oh. not it. Latest parade is at 530. So, I mean, it's starting to get dark at that point. But yeah, they don't do a nighttime one at all. I think because they're doing a whole month of candlelight processional. Right. So oh, they're not the um, parade at night anymore. Oh, see, my main memories of that parade are at night. Like oh, Me too. I, I picture it happening at night. Yeah, so 3.30 and 5.30 are the only times they're doing it now. And so, yeah, so which makes me think that they're not doing the snow after the parade anymore. Probably not. It's hmm. just after the fireworks. And you can get the snow on Main Street by It's a Small World and in the Fantasmic Viewing Area. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember yeah. that. You just stay put after Fantasmic. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's very great. Yeah. Christmas Fantasy Parade is like a classic for me. Like just feels like, I mean, I'm sure it's not as old as we maybe are making it seem, but I just love that it's like been the same and it's just, it's, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a Christmas really? Disneyland classic. <laughs> the roller skates. I oh, I was going to ask you. Sorry. I'm going back to the Jingle Jangle Jamboree real quick. Tanya, you said you could meet regular Santa there. Does that mean he's not like the Western like plaid Santa? Well, I've seen I've seen conflicting reports. I've seen both. OK, on you go. And I've seen Mrs. Claus as well, because I was going to say one of my favorite things about that area during Christmas. I It wasn't the big open Jingle Jangle Jamboree. Then it was just sort of like. I think they called it Santa's reindeer roundup when I was there and we met like the cutest Santa and Mrs. Claus I have ever seen in my entire life. Like I was like a little girl. I was like dying. They were so cute. And he was in all his plaid, like kind of more of a Western look, but he was the cutest Santa ever. Like I thought if you need to meet a great Santa, you know, with your kids for the year, like Disneyland is the place to do it. Cause man, was he cute. Yeah. I love that plaid outfit that he wore yeah i've seen pictures of both and they also took away the reindeer this year there's no reindeer back there reindeer like no little... live reindeer. weird <laughs> they have the goats and they have little christmas handkerchiefs on but no reindeer oh that's always yeah. really fun. i have that on my list of like photo ops and stuff to, i'm glad you said that because that's one of the things we like to see was you could go see real reindeer but no nope, exactly. not more there's um i don't know if they're going to do away with them from now on altogether, but there's a, a massive rumor going around that next year, the holidays will be a hard ticket event at Disneyland. Uh, so we would have that or they're kind of everything like the parade, the fireworks, the only way you'll be able to see that stuff. They're thinking starting next year will be a hard ticket event. So like huh. Mickey's um, very Merry Christmas party at Disney world. Exactly. What do you think of that? Um, I, mm. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind, I guess. I have a, um, a premium pass. So once all the week before Christmas, you'll be able to see everything. Anybody that pays to get into the park will be able to see anything. But anything before that, I think it's just their way of singling out pass holders to hmm. not have to buy tickets to see that stuff. So I don't like crowds a little bit. Exactly. Just keeping the crowds low since it gets not necessarily low, but because it gets so crowded during Christmas. I mean, I would be sad. I don't ever really stay to watch the fireworks anyway. So that's not one of those high priority things for me. But I will be bummed if I don't ever get to see that Christmas parade again without having to actually pay more money for it. <laughs> the passes yeah. are so as it is. That makes me like super sad. Like I'm all for a Christmas party, but when they take like things like the Christmas parade and fireworks and only do it for party guests, like that makes me sad. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But again, it, that's just a, a rumor, but it seems like a pretty solid rumor at this point. Right. But I guess I feel like it maybe has been inevitable just because they've done it at Disney World. So I'm like, I figure it's going to happen eventually at Disneyland. But it's still, I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> a little. It, de- it depends on what they end up taking away and what they end up keeping for rare paying guests. So yeah. have to wait and see. Yeah, I under I mean I understand it a little bit. It helps for for people like me that don't get to go that often and I get I sometimes get frustrated with pass holders, but I agree when you're a premium pass holder that's a little bit of a different story. But anyway. Okay. Next on your list. My number 5 is the castle lighting. Oh yeah. <gasps> yeah, that's on my list too. Be on there. <laughs> it's I was listening to the podcast last week about Heather talking about it and it's the exact same here i mean as far as the feeling that she gets when she sees it we don't have yeah. the cool little show and the stage and all that stuff we just get the lights but it's it's worth seeing for sure because they light it up slowly in the snow and the it's really there's really like a special little music thing they play with like a little talking and stuff it's not like there's no show but it's still kind of like a story kind of thing yeah i like it i i I don't know. I just like it. <laughs> I, love, I love it. And they do it several times. And I, I know at Disney World, they oh, just really? do it. Yeah. At Disney yeah. World, they just do it the once. But at Disneyland, they do it several times. And so, like, they'll dim all the lights down and then it kind of restarts. Right? Yeah. It's at, like, uh, 5, 7.30 and 8.30. It's three or four times in the night. Yeah. How fun. So, sometimes you can just be, like, walking by and it happens. Like, you don't have to, like, go and get a spot, really. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anybody really like, oh, we got to go grab a spot for that castle lighting. Yeah. You know, just sort of walk up and watch it. (laughs) Do they put it on the schedule? I believe so. I believe it is on the schedule. It's on the event. Yeah. The time guide or whatever. Times guide. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Very cool. Was that your whole list? That's my list. That's your whole list. What about you? Uh, The only extra, let me, I'm going through it. Oh, well, my. On my list, I have the Believe in Holiday Magic Fireworks. That is that what they're still called? Yes. Okay. I love the fireworks. And I know, Tanya, you said you not you don't always stay for fireworks. Like, when I first met Tanya, because Tanya and I have met at Disneyland before, and um, when I first met her and we talked and she said that she doesn't really stay for those nighttime things, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, that's like my favorite thing. Like, you have to stay for fireworks. Like, you can't leave before fireworks. So seeing the fireworks, though, set to Christmas music at Disneyland, like there's just nothing that beats that. I feel like that's just, that's just an awesome fireworks show. And maybe it's because here in Utah, like there's no chance you'd ever see fireworks set to Christmas music because it's freezing in December and you wouldn't go to watch fireworks. So it's not something you'd ever see. But I don't know. For me, I love the Believe in Magic or Believe in Holiday Magic fireworks. They're a must do for me for sure. Yeah. And then the other thing that I just really, really love about um, Disneyland at Christmas is the Mardi Gras Christmas decorations in New Orleans Square. Now, there are Christmas decorations throughout the whole park. But for me, like the New Orleans Square is my favorite like land, I think. And seeing it at a Christmas time all decked out in like the Mardi Gras Christmas theme is like stunning to me. And especially at night. It's so beautiful. I love it. I would never miss it. I would always make sure to go and see all the Christmas decorations at New Orleans Square. Yes, I have. I have that is like um, um, on my notes. I have that written down as well. The, I love that they put them up kind of <laughs> early too, so you could see them even more. Like, like they're usually yeah. the first bit of Christmas decorations to go up. Yeah, they were up when we were there. Like they were starting to go up when we were there. Like at the very end of like the Halloween type season, we're yeah. like, well, they're up already. <laughs> they don't waste oh. any time with those ones. Nope. Love it. Love those, those decorations. Cause they're bright and, and like colorful and like pinks and lime green and purple. And that's like my, I, that's how I decorate my tree at home is in those, all those bright, crazy colors. So it's, it's, it's my aesthetic. I love that. <laughs> it's really pretty. And it looks like new Orleans too. I just love that whole area. So much going on and it's so busy, but it just works. Mm-hmm. I love it. For sure. Yeah. Have you ever done the candlelight processional, Tanya? 
I haven't, but I am going this year. Oh, you are. Yes. I got um, seats for the 15th to Saturday. I believe it's the 15th. Do you oh, know yeah. who's, who, who the star is that night? Patricia. Narrator? Patricia Heaton. Oh, fun. Yeah. Oh, fun. I love her. I do too. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I actually, I can honestly say that because I don't go on the weekends very often, very, very rarely do I ever go on the weekends. I've never even seen it set up before because they only ever did it one weekend a year oh. here. So, I've so never, now they're doing it every weekend? They're doing it for 20 days straight. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're doing really? it pretty the entire month. That's like such a huge change from once to 20. Yeah, it's a huge change. I mean, I don't know, I'm not even sure their reasoning behind doing it like this. I think, and most, and it was an annual pass holder raffle to get a seat. So yeah. there's only two nights that aren't for annual pass holders or anybody. I think that there were only two that were actual like hard ticket events to get a seat. So um, do you, since you haven't been, maybe you don't know, but I don't know much about the candlelight processional at Disneyland other than I know a couple of people who have been who didn't really love it. And then a couple of people who go and it's like their favorite thing in the whole world. So can you tell us about what you know about it? Like, I don't know much about it. Actually, <laughs> I don't really get what it is. <laughs> yeah. I know they tell the story of Christmas. I know there's singers and I know there's a narrator. That's pretty much all I know. And I was looking at the stage because they had the stage set up. They don't have any of the seating set up yet, but where it's at, is I don't even understand how it's going to work. <laughs> like, just because it's set up on the train station on yeah. Main Street, and I can't even imagine trying to get into the park around that. Yeah. Or how to set up the seats. I don't. I don't. I'm very, very curious. I, the first one is tonight, I believe. So you have to have a ticket and have to have a seat to go to it. You can't just like go and wait or try and like see it. I'm not sure how it's going to, I'm not sure how it's going to work. I mean, I've heard at Disney world that you can just wait in line and go, but since they did this annual pass holder raffle thing, I'm assuming that all the spots are filled. Huh? So I'm not quite There's sure. probably people out there listening going, Oh, you, you dummy. You're so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just I, tell you about it. <laughs> I, I mean, I tried to look at some of the stuff about it, but I, it's kind of hard to get. It's confusing. I don't quite understand Cause especially cause they're doing it different this year. Right. I don't know if that's going to change anything. Or is it about like the like Christmas story, like a nativity story? I don't even, I don't have no idea. It's okay. Here, here's some, a little bit of information that I found and it says the Disneyland holiday tradition takes place on main street USA and features a full orchestra, Christmas tree chorus, performing renditions of uh, traditional Christmas songs and a retelling of the Christmas story by a celebrity narrator. It also says that for the first couple nights, it's by invitation only. And then for the remaining nights, seating, seating was available to annual pass holders via sweepstakes. I'm thinking it's not open to anybody else. Yeah, it doesn't huh. sound open to just anybody. Yeah. I'm thinking that if you just go and show up, you might, you aren't going to be able to go. If you're a regular pass, you have to be a pass holder, it sounds like. So it's like the part, is it like, when, when is it? Like, do they close the park for it? I don't get oh, it. During park hours. I'm, I think there's two showings a night. I'm going at 730, but I think there's one at like 530 as well. So there's two showings. Cause I remember when I signed up, you had to pick a time and it, there were two different time options. So I don't so, know. If Magic. you're not wanting to deal with the madness over there, maybe avoid Disneyland on the night that is the processional, right? Or just like get in and stay away from Main Street. <laughs> like exactly. get in and go to the back of the park. <laughs> I mean, it looks like the schedule there. It's almost every night in December. Yeah, almost oh, every night in December. Wow. Um, Heather got in for when she's out here next week. Oh, oh yay. Good. Good so she will be going on Thursday. So I'll have to get all the scoop from her about it and <laughs> find out what exactly is going on. Cool. Yeah, we will. We'll get the scoop from her as well. And by the time this show posts, we will uh, add it to the show notes. How does that sound? Definitely. Great. And then we'll know a little bit more about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate not knowing. I, I walked in and I was like, whoa, look at this big old stage. Like, I didn't even know that was how it was done. I do. Uh, yeah, all I, I know. All I've ever seen are the pictures of like the little choir children or boys or whatever it is on the like <laughs> Christmas tree, you know. Yeah. type of set <laughs> like the same photo that you see every year i've never even bothered to watch i should have just watched a video i'm sure there's a video of it on youtube probably eh, just go in maybe just go in and, and be surprised exactly because <laughs> when does that ever happen to you at <laughs> disney i know <laughs> when you don't really know what you're gonna get <laughs>
That's when, when you're people like us, not very often because you usually plan every single detail, <laughs> right? And or you've been enough times that you know it all, and yes, so that's fun to do something new. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's why I'm dragging my mom and my boyfriend, and they're just like they're. What are we? What are we going to? I don't understand. And I'm like, I don't understand either. It's going to be fun. Like, <laughs> it's Disney. How can it not be fun? How can it not be magical? It's going to be awesome. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Okay. Did either of you have anything that you wanted to add? Um, I wanted to talk about Cars Land Christmas. Yes. Time. Oh yes. <laughs> I saw pictures of this online, no. and I want to see it so bad. Yeah. Yes. It is so perfectly themed to Cars Land that it's kind of disgusting because it, <laughs> <laughs> it is per- tire garlands, oil can Christmas trees, like cone shaped Christmas trees. Everything is so perfectly themed that I don't even I don't know how they come up with it sometimes. Oh, fun. Yeah, it, it's pretty it's pretty neat. And it's I was a little scared at first at what they were going to do for Christmas there and Buena Vista street, just cause it looked so good as it was that I always get scared that when they do overlays on things that it's going to look cheesy, even though I know it's not, it's Disney. They always end up doing something nice, but I always get scared at first, but it looks good. And so does Buena Vista street and the characters are in, um, they pretty much just added scarves and stuff to them, I think in their Buena Vista street outfits, but, and the tree there is gorgeous. And Santa is meeting inside Elias and company. Yeah. Or on the street. Inside, yeah. how fun! Set up inside the store. Yeah, there. I. It looks like, from what I could tell, there are lots and lots of really fun photo ops inside Cars Land for the holidays. You can. Yeah, we should. Are we going to go through and talk about our photo app photo op spots during the holidays? Let's do it. I don't mean to like jump into that. I just oh, want to no. make sure we go over it because that. Because I want to talk about that too. That's so fun. Okay, let's let's go for it. Did you? Well, did since you, we're talking did, about Cars Land, Tanya, tell us about the best photo op spots in Cars Land. Um, oh, you have to get a picture in front of Flo's V8 Cafe for sure. I've seen pictures um, when they light it up at night that it, the lights are green and red on it. They have some oh. like for Christmassy time, and um, they have the new car snowman out front. Yes, by the big main entrance sign turns to cars land and that thing is just, that's like the must do photo op for everybody all of a sudden is the is that snowman or the car man <laughs> car, car, the snow car snow, snow car, car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun. yeah i can see why because that's definitely one i would want to get a picture of my family with in front of if i was there during the holidays yes oh and um mater is now wearing a santa hat oh funny. the character me Yes. Oh, fun. <laughs> Giant Santa hat. <laughs> so he's oh, Santa. Is so funny. So cute. What else? Um, I believe they changed in Cars Land, the, um, Stanley, the uh, statue of Stanley in the back. They, he's now Santa Stanley and he has a bag. And oh, so cute. Ridiculous amount of Christmas opportunities just in that one section of the park. No kidding. It looks so fun. Yeah. And then all the normal on Buena Vista Street, the tree and the characters, I believe around that tree alone, they have three or four photopass photographers getting you at different angles. So where is the tree? That's what I was just going to ask. The tree is right at the very end of um, Buena Vista Street, like in that little circle area that's behind the Walt and Mickey statue. Okay. Oh, behind okay. Storytellers. Right or- there. Is it storytellers? Yeah, storytellers. It's in that little section. So not like where the fountain is, but the other little circle area that's right in front of Elias and Co. Yeah, it's between Elias and Carthay Circle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's it's they it's all retro decorations for the I mean it's perfectly themed for the era and all the toys underneath of it are all toys from like the fifties and sixties and forties and fun. It's it's, it's like really vintage pretty. Christmas. Stitch Christmas. How fun. Cute. See, that's so fun. When there's new stuff like that at the parks, and I didn't even think about the fact that it would be, like, new for Christmas, too. So, so yeah. fun. Positive what they were going to be doing for Christmas. Because, I mean, it really hasn't been open that long. Right. So, I wasn't sure if they were going to go all out or not. Because I know they didn't for Halloween because it was too soon. Mm. Yeah, so. I heard that they've been uh, planning what they were going to do for the holidays since January before it even opened. 
I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Pretty cool stuff. What other photo ops do you guys want to mention? Well, I, uh, we sort of already talked about it at the beginning, but it's a small world holiday. Like the outside of it is so lit up that it's such a beautiful photo op. Like we have some of the cutest, I just remembered I have been at Christmas a long time ago when I was like in high school with my family. We have the cutest picture of my whole family in front of like the big bright lit up. Um, it's a small world and it's really beautiful. Um, so that's one of my favorite uh, spots that, you know, I guess it's beautiful to take a picture in front of it at any time of year, but at Christmas, especially, um, the tree at, in, on main street is just so huge and so awesome. Tanya and I were actually talking about this on Instagram <laughs> back <Yeah>. and forth <laughs> just recently about it. And it's just an awesome site and a fun place to take a great picture. Um, and then I was going to say one of my favorite ideas that I can't even remember where I saw it. But then we started to start doing it on our own was we uh, and I'll put a picture of this in the show notes so you can understand what I'm talking about. But like we went up to the Main Street Christmas tree, Josh and I, and found like a big ball ornament, like the biggest one we could find that we could see ourselves in. And then we took a picture of ourselves in the like we took a picture of the ornament where we could see ourselves. Your reflection. Yeah. And so like you can see us and you can see our camera like you know, taking the picture. But then there's like you can see in the reflection of the ornament, like Main Street behind us and the omnibus was going by and it just Aww. you could see like all the Christmas stuff. It's the cutest picture. Everybody who goes that during Christmas time should take this picture. Copy my picture and take it. <laughs> so cute. That's, that's a great idea. I'll take I'll I'll put a picture. Yeah. Uh, I'll put the notes. And it's easy to do with the size of those ornaments on that tree it's too. Like, <laughs> So that's one of my favorite things. The castle at night is so fun to photograph if you, you know, are into playing with your DSLR. Yeah. Things, right. And, you know, because you can go off to the side where it's quiet and just play with your settings and get like just gorgeous pictures of that iced covered castle. I was so happy and so excited when they added that. I, I don't even remember what it was, like a few years back that that's yeah. been night now. It's just it's so beautiful and so fun to photograph. And then I was going to ask you, Tanya, now that it's the, the different in the back, in mm -hmm. the Thunder Ranch, do they still have that big sled with all the Christmas lights on it where you can like get in the in like a big Santa sled kind of? You know, I haven't even noticed this year. They always have. They have, though. In the past. Oh, I didn't yeah. Even, yeah, I didn't even notice if it was still there. And I'm sure it is because I don't know what else they would put in that area. Right. And because it, it's right outside in the yeah, front like of it. Into Big Thunder Ranch. There's like a yeah. photo op spot and they have this one where I've been, they have this big red sled where you can like pile your whole family <laughs> sled, take the cutest picture. My have I have a really cute family picture of, of everybody just piled in that sled all together. So I'll that's have fun. to make a point to look next time. I'm sure I'm sure they still have it. I can't imagine them not having that. Photo ops is like one of my favorite things about Disneyland anyway. And so then at Christmas when there's like special ones. Yeah. So For yeah, sure. those are my photo op picks, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. What else did you guys, did you have other things on your list that you wanted to discuss? Um, Oh, uh, the candy cane making. Yeah. <gasps> I was going to ask you, Tanya, if you <laughs> I have a done it. serious problem with getting to the park at park opening. Like, I just, I can't do it. Can't do it. It's madness, right? I've never tried to do it. Okay, so for people who don't know, Main Street, on Main Street, the little candy shop, what's it called? Oh, um, the Candy Palace. Yeah, they make these homemade, or, you know, candy canes from scratch. And it's a huge deal to be able to get one. They only make a certain amount per day. And they're, like, gone. You have to, like, show up at Park Open, get a wristband, right? And, like, yeah, yeah. Go get candy people, cane. Like, people, big. like, they open the gates and people run. Run wow. to get in line. <laughs> like, well, there's wristbands, right? Where I think, I, yeah. I just read on somewhere where you wait outside the park or something, you get your little wristband and you go in and get them. And if you're not there within, like, your window that's on your wristband, like, it'll give it, it could be given to someone on standby. It's, like, wow. it's a huge, like, a, <laughs> a standby list. <laughs> And they're huge. They're big, thick candy canes, and they're homemade. And I guess, I don't know, do people eat them, or is it more like a souvenir? I don't know. I've seen people that eat them, but I don't I don't know. God, I wouldn't eat it. <laughs> I don't, they are. They're, they're big, and people wait. And they, they, you could see, it's fun because you could see them making them. 
Yeah, I like I to see the Yeah, and they're doing it in um, California Adventure now too. I heard that. So they're it they're on one day they'll do it at Disneyland and then the next day they do it at California Adventure all through the month. But um, I didn't get I haven't gotten one from standing in line before. They have made them, you know, and then they put them on display. And so I've bought one of those before. I mean, they're good. I think it's just the thrill of actually getting one. Yeah, and they're expensive, aren't they? Like twelve dollars. They're like twelve dollars. Yeah. <laughs> My mom thought it was nuts. <laughs> it's, I think that maybe it would be fun just if you were going to say, okay, this is what we're going to do, you know, today is trying mm-hmm. to get a cane. It, it, but it's not something you could just casually, no. Do. you'd have to like really be up for the, the hunt and the fun of it. Yeah, I actually took the candy cane that I got because I managed to break it before I even got home and just smashed it up and made cookies with it. Oh, so it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It, I think that's the only um, other thing that I had wanted to talk about. You wanted to mention. Yeah, I had no idea that the candy cane thing was such a big deal until I saw that online that you have to get wristbands and stuff. I was like, wow. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> have been like it was speculating about the dates and the times yeah. for like months. Yeah, yeah like, I saw they posted a list online of the dates you can get them. Yeah. Just because people are always asking people always. That's the one thing I get tons of questions about is when they're doing the candy canes. <laughs> it's crazy. And now I don't remember how many there are per day, but it's a small amount. They only yeah. do like the one batch, right? Yeah, it's not a lot. They only do, I believe, I believe it might be two, but I think it's one. I think it's one and, and they can't even guarantee a number because if one breaks or one doesn't turn out right, you know, it, it can go, it can, the number can go down. Oh, so the earlier you're there, the better to guarantee yourself a candy cane. And wow. I think they let you get two per person. Oh, they do? I think so. Two per I, wristband? Yeah. But I know that when I read this, I think I read it on the Disney food blog that she kind of wrote a big thing about how to get it and, you know, how they're doing it this year. And you can get, um, you can only get, I don't know about yeah. Oh, she says that your wristband will only get you one candy cane. And if you have other people with you, you each have to have a, can- a wristband. Like you can't say like, okay, I'm waiting in line for me and my husband. Like, can he get a wristband too? He has to be standing there to like get his wristband. Oh, they've gotten out of control this year then. <laughs> because I know, it, I know it was two before, but yeah, it's become such a big deal that they're having, they've not only have they added more dates with it being in on Buena Vista Street as well, that they've had to knock it down to you only getting one. Yeah, and she says that there are 40 wristbands per batch and three batches a day. So that means only 120 per day at all in the whole park. Wow. So that's that's how many wristbands and, yeah. And then I, th- I guess there is a standby line. So that if there's extra, you could possibly get one in standby, but. <laughs> wow. So, so like, crazy. They wait outside the park at, from, like, the crack of dawn to, like, yeah. which is so funny to me. <laughs> But yeah, it's just one of those fun, like people look forward to doing that at Christmas like time. Friday thing that I don't, I don't quite understand either, but people love it. It's the uh, same kind of like thrill, I think. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess that's when it, you know, it's a benefit to be from the East coast because you're going to be up at the crack of dawn anyway with the time difference. That's true. <laughs> true. So Heather should have good ch- a good chance of getting in line for a candy cane. <laughs> totally bet she's going to try. Don't you think Heather will try and get a candy cane? I would. If I was coming from the East Coast, I totally would. Yeah, she, she, she should just because she is very good at getting there at rope job. Yeah, she she's is. Very good at that. <laughs> so I would, she should just because she'll be there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think you have to like I know that some people show up just like even a half an hour early before park opens and they still can get a wristband. I've heard yeah. that. But it's not get you know, you're not guaranteed but you could probably get one. And I you think it's different like early. It's different on days where there's extra magic hours too. I think I, they plan the time they plan it around it. So that none of the days that have extra magic hours are days that they do candy okay. cane. Yeah, they alternate between between Disneyland and California Adventure, making the candy canes at each different park. So it's probably opposite of whichever day has, yeah. the park has extra yep. magic hours. Okay. The park opens at like seven. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah. And what else did I have here? Um, I The holidays end on the 6th this year. 
That always just depends on what day New Year's falls on. The end date. Yeah, the end date. Because I've seen times where if the second falls on a Monday, it'll end on the second. I've seen that too. And that actually happened to us one time when we went. We only got like a couple days of Christmas and then it was kind of over. I actually yeah. met Tanya for the first time when we were there for Christmas. Yeah. In 2010. In January. In January yeah. Yeah. We were there so in January. It's probably just the Monday after yeah, it's New Year's. Usually, yeah. And if New Year's... I. New Year's this year falls on, I don't even know. It, yeah, it just depends on the day of the week that New Year's Day falls on and what's what's convenient for them really to start getting down. I like when they extend it that extra week though. Yeah. Because that's a little bit more time. It just works well for us and our family. Yeah. Um, Tony, can you think of any other characters that have like special Christmas outfits or anything? Like, don't the, like, I just... I'm trying to go through and think like on main street, the main fab five or whatever have like their Christmas sweaters and uh, either earmuffs or a hat. One time we met, we met Mickey and his hat was like off, like it kind of had a problem. And so it was like sitting off to the side. He just had his sweater on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it's mainly just the fab five that do Christmas related outfits. I'm trying to think of anybody else that they will sometimes they'll put a sweater. I know the, the princesses, I don't think it's necessarily Christmassy, but sometimes you'll see them with a little something extra. Like their uh, shawls. Yeah, or like, like their shawls. Or... I always love when Jasmine has her big cape thing on. Yes, I love that big cape. It's pretty. She has like a big, it, you know, she's a little more covered up, which I, I kind of like because I'm always <laughs> like, yikes, Jasmine. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> but she has fun. She's just all like at this big robe kind of thing. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, I like that. But other than that, um, I don't think anybody else is specific. This year, and it's not necessarily for Christmas, but this year Tinkerbell has a, like a winter outfit for because the the new the new uh, the new movie. Sk- yeah, the, what, they have the, the skating rink up in downtown Disney too yeah. for that. And so she has kind of this cute. We actually saw her cute winter outfit when we were there because um, yeah, it was for the movie, not necessarily for Christmas, but it's really yeah. cute. They should always have her wear it at Christmas because it's cute. I think she does wear it at Christmas time at Disney World. I've seen tons of pictures of her in it before, but I've never seen her at Disneyland in it before. Yeah, it's cute. It's got like fur and it's yeah. cute. Yeah, I forgot about the, the ice skating rink at Downtown Disney as well. And is that and something new this year or is it there all the time? Because I've never heard of it until this year. It's when this before year. they had yeah it's new this year this specific one they used to have one all the time before they remodeled the Disneyland hotel they used to put up an ice skating rink there every year hmm. as far as I can remember unless I'm remembering correctly but yeah this one is it's specifically up to promote the new Tinkerbell movie because all the the fencing around it and stuff is promoting her new Christmas meeting her sister movie or whatever it's about She's like winter fairy, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen it, but she's a winter fairy. Her sister's a winter fairy. Periwinkle, right? We got to meet, got to meet her too. She's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and not related. We're on a tangent here, but. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> something different and it is kind of wintry related. It's it just has been very wintry here until this week. So those poor kids were out there ice skating in like 90 degree weather right. two weeks ago. <laughs> like... <laughs> Uh, and, T- and Pixie Hollow also has a really cute right now. I don't I don't know if it's something they do all the time for Christmas, but right now it has a cute kind of winter snow overlay all throughout Pixie Hollow when you go meet the fairies. Oh, cute. Fun. Because of the winter fairy, I think, guess is why. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if they'll do that every year now. Secret of the Wings. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that thing maybe called? <laughs> I hope they do it every year. It's cute. The winter overlay. In I there. like they add something Christmassy to or wintry to everything. Yeah. It kind of makes me sad that there's, I mean, I understand the reason for there not really being anything in Tomorrowland, but I want some Christmas in there. Is there anything Christmas in Tomorrowland at all? I don't think so. There should be. I know. It was a little something. Ro- Robot celebrate, celebrate Christmas too. <laughs> like it can <laughs> be really cool. It can be all cool and like futuristic. Yeah. Techie. Can you imagine you know. the possibilities of a, technology type Christmas that they can do. I, think, I bet they could do something really cool in there. I just wonder why they don't. Yeah. At least mm-hmm. winter related, if not. Yeah. Yeah. There's okay. no 
the future. (laughs) 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 Christmas and Christmas and Christmas just keeps getting longer and longer in the future is what happens. It starts earlier and earlier. So when does Christmas start? I was just going to ask that. When does Christmas, like when do they start getting everything up and like when does it's a small world holiday open? Do you know the dates on that? Official start was November 12th, I believe this year, but that snow was on the castle before Halloween. Oh yeah. When we go during Halloween, the snow is always on the castle. And I'm always like, geez, <laughs> really? You have the snow castle at Halloween? Come on. Yeah. It goes I, in increments. They slowly start adding stuff in and all of a sudden overnight, it's everything's up. It's so from the end of October, actually mid-October really, until the official start date, which is usually mid-November. Wow. They just gradually put everything up. It's it kind of it's weird because i'll go to the park one week and then i'll go the next week and it's just like full-blown christmas and i'm like whoa when i don't even know when that happened yeah and nothing against the the christmas castle decorations this is snow on it is very cute but when you see it without the rest of the christmas decorations and it's just like the snow on the roof it reminds me of like a toadstool like a mushroom castle like, yeah because it's cartoonish looking snow so it's it, it, when looks, it's done, without, it looks great but <laughs> i went um one of the Tuesdays that I went, they were filming the new Tom Hanks movie in the park. Oh and, yeah. And the snow was on the castle. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't really think that's going to fit the theme. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously they'll t- probably take it out in any sort of post-processing that they do, but they had everything all set up to look like it did when Walt was in the park. And I just couldn't get over the cat, the, the snow being on the castle. Honey. That's fun that you got to be there while they were filming that. I saw some of the pictures of your pictures on Instagram and then other people had posted pictures of it. This is sorry. This is way off topic now. <laughs> but when they were filming that, it looked so cool because all the extras were like in those like cool 50s outfits. And it looked I felt like, oh, wow, that's like the closest you'll ever get to being in the park yeah. when it was like Walt's age, you know, <laughs> yeah, Walt, Walt, when Walt age. was walking. Okay. Yeah. She, um, they brought out the vintage flower cart that they used to have in the park all the time. And I thought my mom was going to keel over and have a heart attack because she was like, oh my God, I remember that from when I was young. <laughs> and they had like the vintage popcorn machines and cars and all kinds of stuff like that, right? The vintage Snow White. Oh, wow. And I saw vintage, uh, Mickey and Minnie were there. It's pretty cool. I'm excited. I don't know what this movie is all going to be about, but just seeing that filming stuff made me super excited. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm surprised you don't, they don't, haven't really done a major motion picture that has anything to do with Walt Disney himself. I know. So the, it'll be exciting to see. Sorry, we're way off topic, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I <to> Christmas. <laughs> to Christmas. Yeah. Do you guys have any other Christmas related things you want to add? <laughs> no, I, I think I'm good. Okay. Then we will move on to our picks with pixie dust. And do you do you want to start, Brittany? Sure. Um, my pick with pixie dust is I was searching around online to try and find some of the Disney Parks Christmas music that I could like either buy or listen to. And I don't know if there's like a CD in the park or not that you can buy, but I couldn't find really anything online that I could buy from home. Maybe someone out there knows of something you can buy. But I did find this awesome link. Um, that is a MySpace music page. And I mean, like, do you remember MySpace? Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's been a while, <laughs> but it's cool. Uh, just this one page that uh, you click on it and it takes you to six streaming Christmas Disneyland Christmas songs. And there's the fireworks music and then the white Christmas song that plays after the fireworks. Yeah. And this is, that I remember them playing, I think they still do when it snows. Is that right, Tanya? Yeah. So they, they, they play the white Christmas song and then it, you know, they do the snow and then that, that song's on there. And then the, the castle lighting music is on there. The Christmas fantasy parade. It's a small world holiday. And then there's a song called Christmas all around us, which I haven't, I wasn't real familiar with, but as I listened to it, I think it's like park closing type music. Oh yeah. That's- so, you can go on there and you can just click. There's a little link that says play all six and you can click on it and it'll just play all six songs. And it's like almost like a half hour of wow. awesome Disneyland Christmas music. Still <laughs> <in>. Magic. How <laughs> fun. I love I have, listening to park songs. Huh? 
I love listening to music that they play in the parks. Ew, me too. Because you don't you don't really realize that you're what you're listening to, but then when you hear it not in the parks, you're like, oh, now I remember. Yeah. It makes like, me happy. It always mm-hmm. makes me happy. If, and I have a lot of park music. Like I've listened to different, you know, different websites have radio stations, but I've never found anything that's like Christmas specific. So when I found these, I was like, yes. And I haven't. <laughs> When I found the link, I tried to figure out a way to get it to play on my phone so that I could, when I'm in the car, I could plug my phone in and have it stream off my phone or something. And I can't figure out a way to get it to play on my phone. It's supposed to work because I guess now I learned this as I was trying to get this to work, that MySpace has like a a web-based app for their music stuff that's supposed to allow you to play it through your web browser on your phone. But for me, it didn't work. Like when I click it, it says just uh, there's an error. Hmm. So anyone figures out a way to get it to play on their phone, let us know in the comments area because I couldn't do it. I tried real hard, but I couldn't figure it out. So for now you can play it on through your computer and listen to that awesome Christmas Disneyland music. <laughs> for sure. Tanya, do you have a pick? I do. Uh, mine is, you can go to the website. It's called timehop.com. And it, I found, found out that they have an app too. So I downloaded the app, but I was before I was getting daily emails, you link it to your social media account. So I have mine hooked to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And every day I wake up to an email or now that I just checked the app, um, it'll show me what I posted one year ago today. How fun. Yeah. So I was, uh, yeah, time hop. And it was kind of neat because you get to relive trips. And oh, stuff. Yeah, so, because I'm keeping you know, track, I, I post so many photos from vacations and stuff. I mean, it does just daily stuff too, obviously, but I'll be like, oh, I went to Disneyland one year ago today. Cool. How Forget fun. Those. Yeah, because some, some people live so close <laughs> that they forget when. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that often, but like, I wouldn't really think, like, oh, one year ago today I was in Fantasyland or whatever. You know, I wouldn't really think yeah. that through. And I've heard of Time Hot. I think I've turned heard of Time Hop before, and but I've never really realized about how it could be so fun to see like vacation. Yeah, kind of. Up. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, Thanksgiving just happened, and two days after Thanksgiving recently, I was like, oh well, today was the day was Thanksgiving last year. You know, like you get to see fun stuff that you did that I totally forgot some of the stuff that I had actually posted about or done. So it's kind of neat to see. Very cool. So you can sign up for the emails or you can just check your yes, app. Yes, if you go to the website, it'll tell you to download the app. But if you, it says if you don't have an iPhone, because I believe it's iPhone only, um, you can sign up for daily emails. Cool. Fine. And then you and then you just link all of your social media accounts with it. Right? Exactly. Okay. Cool. All right. My pick is a post on um, WD Info about... WW info, sorry, about uh, Christmas at Disneyland and all of the different things that you can do. So it has a little bit of information and some videos about all of the different things, holiday things. And I think we talked about almost every one of them. But if you want to see some pictures and stuff, this would be a great way to see them. Yeah. So mentioned, sorry, I'm kind of jumping back into our topic, but I was also going to just mention that a lot of times if I like check the travel channel, they'll have really great Christmas Disneyland specials that talk about all the kind of fun things. And I did, I agree. I think we did cover all of them already, but (laughs) you know, to actually see like professional footage of it and stuff. Yeah. That's a good one that covers the food too. Yeah. That Christmas. Uh, Yeah. The Christmas food. So maybe, you know, do a little search on your TiVo or something and see if there's of those coming up so they definitely play it every year I mean to like jump back into that but how fun I had no idea they're cute stuff you should look and see if you can find them they're fun to watch even if you've been a million times and you know it all right. it's almost like revisiting the park just oh, yeah to watch those when they come on I totally agree so. yeah okay so let's go around one more time and remind everybody where they can find you Brittany I am at britishdesigns.com British with two T's and that's where you'll be able to find my digital scrapbooking shop and my blog. And there's links there on my blog to other social media places like Instagram and Facebook and all of that stuff. So great. That's Yay. Okay. Tanya, um, you can find me at crossbonecuts.blogspot.com and same as Brittany, you can find all my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that fun stuff there. And you're a digital scrapbook designer as well. 
I oh, am. I am at scrapmatters.com. Perfect. You should check out Tanya's stuff. It is really cute. Oh, so, thanks, Britt. Super it's- cute, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Steph, and you can find me at thedailydigi.com and also at capturingmagic.me, which is where you can find out information and additional stuff about creating and capturing magic memories. And I want to make sure that I announce, because I haven't done it in the podcast yet, the iPhone app that I've been working on for forever was uh, just released, just approved and released in the App Store. And so you'll want to check it out. It is an app that will basically let you set up different places that you want to take photos in the parks, and it will remind you because... I came home from trips too many often, too often wondering why I didn't get pictures of this and that. And so it's, it has memories that you can set up that are not location based, um, for planning your trip all the way, starting from planning your trip through the end of your trip and getting back home, uh, that you can add to a list. And then it has location based stuff that will buzz you and remind you as you're walking through the parks that you wanted to take a photo there. So I'm really excited about it. I'll put a link to that in the show notes, but you can also go to capturingmagic.me on the homepage. There's a link to the iPhone app. So exciting. I just downloaded it and started playing. (laughs) (laughs) I use it in the parks. I'm so excited. Yeah. It's, it's the user interface in it is awesome. Thank you. It's so it good looking. Really, yeah, it's really nice. I'm all about apps that look good. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it does not look cheap. No. <laughs> Yeah, me too. So it's it's a fun thing. It's a great way to organize a vacation because you can set up a trip and who's going to be on the trip. And then there's lots of really cool things that it does that some people will really appreciate, like adding the location and the name of the park, the name of the land and everyone that's in the photo to the metadata of the photo. But other people will say meta who and not care. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, okay, I think that's it for today. So thank you so much for joining us, Tanya. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And we will see you back here next week where we will be capturing magic. (laughs) 